Well, good evening. Uh, today is the 4th of July, the day I'm making this. I'm in the 13th chapter of Matthew where Jesus is speaking to the people in parables. And he's speaking to the multitude and the disciples came up in verse number 10 and he asked them, he asked him a question, why speakest thou unto them in parables? Well, we know that a parable is basically a story. It's a story that has a spiritual meaning. And here he's talking about the seed and the sower. And we read in this chapter here about the seed and the sower. And back in that day, there was a lot of people that understood the seed and the sower. They understood that there was seed to be planted because back in that day, people depended on the ground to feed them. It's no different today except people don't go to the garden to get their food. They go to the store and get their food. Some people don't even know that milk comes from cows. And, but when these disciples came up, they was questioning the Lord, why speakest thou unto them in parables? And in the next verse, Jesus had said, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but unto them it is not given. Meaning that some people, they're just not going to get it without bringing a story and hoping that they would get it. Well, if you look on down near uh, 18, in Matthew 13 is where I'm at, he says, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. Now, see, this is when he's talking to the, to the gathering that is gathered together according to verse 2. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one. Well, the word goes out to every whosoever, but it's up to the whosoever to take advantage of the word. If a person that says they're a Christian don't take advantage of the word, then you almost have to wonder how much Christianity do they have. How much Christianity do they really, really have if they don't take advantage of the word? He says here, and understandeth it not, meaning when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, talking about the scripture or the word that he's saying, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one. Well, the wicked one is to take away the word out of their ears and out of their heart. It's not that the wicked one can remove it once someone believes in Christ and they have salvation. If a person is truly born again of the Spirit of God, then they will be able to have salvation. But, you know, there is a cert such thing as taking the, the words out of the heart and then he, and then the Lord even names this. This is he which received seed by the wayside. Is, is there Christians, is there Christians that are living in the wayside? Is there Christians that are, are living in their Christian life in the wayside? If they very well could be. Um, is it a blessed place? No. A wayside in a field is in the corner of the field and along the edge of the fence, along the edge of the woods. Generally, I've got fields here at my place and the fence, some fences is close to the wood line and the wood line tends to hang over the fence a little bit. Therefore, we don't plant seed right along the edge of the fence. We move away 
very slightly away from the fence, and then we put and apply the seed in the ground. And that seed is designed to come up, but the wayside is the edge of where the thick grass is, where the fence is, where there's no abundant harvest. The wayside doesn't give you any abundant harvest. Oh, it might give you a, a, a grass or two here, there, and yonder, but it's not. The wayside is different from the rest of the field. Is there Christians that are living in the wayside? He calls it the wayside. Then if you look at verse 20, but he that received the seed into stony places. And now the stony places is places obviously where the seed cannot grow as well because the ground is hard. There's stony ground. And that's what he calls it right here. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and with joy receive it. Meaning these people on stony ground heard the word, but listen to what he says in 21. Yet hath he not root in himself. He doesn't grow because he doesn't have a lot of root. There's a lot of people that don't have a lot of root. They might call themselves a Christian, and only the Lord knows who the Christian really is. But here, he's talking about the stony places. There's no root in himself, endureth for a while, meaning he grows for a little while. But then, when tribulation or persecution arise, because of the word, and there will be persecution that will come. But the persecution is coming in order for the person that is in the stony places to evaluate themselves. It's good that the person evaluate what kind of life that they're living. If they're living in, in a place that that they don't take the time to evaluate their self. It says, for when the tribulation and persecution arise because of the word, by and by he is offended. We'll take someone that easily gets offended. It's what it's talking about here in this verse. People get offended all the time. People get their feelings hurt all the time. Could they be Christians and still have their feelings hurt? I guess it's possible. It's not the blessed type of ground to be in, to be in the stony places. It's not the blessed type of ground to be stuck in the wayside. And then if you look at verse 22, he also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. Now they hear the word, the stony ground heard the word, and the and the wayside heard the word. He that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. That's talking about the the ground of the thorns. That's what he's basically referring to right here. Is there Christians that are living in the thorns? Yeah. Are they blessed? Not in my opinion, they're not. Because they're not in the abundance of being able to grow to the fullest potential. You know, I planted some cucumbers in my pots. And they've done pretty good. But the plants are getting old now. And what I'm having the feeling of is that there's no more cucumbers that's going to grow. So all the water that I dump on them cucumbers are basically the water is being wasted. Because the plants are not producing any more vegetables. What I'm going to have to do is yank up the plants and throw the plants away. Because the plants has played out and has done the best they could with the 
plants being grown in the pots. And here we see the thorns as he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and becometh unfruitful. How many people that are Christians are unfruitful today? There's a lot. There's a lot of people that are unfruitful. Are they still considered to be someone that God is going to save on that ultimate final day? Only God knows if a person has really been born again of the Spirit. I would think that if I had a job making a hundred thousand dollars a year, I think I would appreciate that job to do the absolute best I could to make the boss happy. If he's paying me a, an absorbent amount of money, I would do whatever it could to be able to be thankful for the job to the point that I would be willing to give overtime and, and over and above the call of duty. But the place of the wayside is not the, is not the blessed place. The stony places is not the best places. It's not the blessed. It's not best and it's not the blessed. The thorns is not blessed because the thorns are blocking out the sunshine. I've got an area in my fence that's got a lot of briars and there's very little grass that grows under them briars. Them briars need to be sprayed. Them briars need to be killed back in order for the grass to grow back up under the fence. There needs to be some spraying going on. And I hope that we're going to get to that pretty soon, that the spray will take care of the weeds and the thorns because the thorns is is blocking out what grass there is. It don't look good. How many people do you think doesn't look good in front of the Lord? Do I want to go to heaven and not look my best? I'm not talking about the natural far as my looks and my body. Do I want to show up there with with fruit? With with fruit that the Lord can say well done. Now we're down at verse 23. 23 is a verse that I talked about in the nursing home. Verse 23 says this, But he that receives seed into good ground, you notice the good ground is not the wayside. It's not the stony places. It's not the thorns. It's the good grounds. You notice that there's four different kinds of grounds. The wayside, the stony places, the thorns, and the good grounds. If there's not much seed coming up on the wayside, there's a reason for that. If there's not much seed coming up on the stony places, then there's a reason for that. If there's a reason that the thorns is blocking out the grass from underneath the fence, and there's a reason for that. And there's a reason that there is good grounds, and the Bible says that it talks about the good grounds as he that heareth the word. Now, the same word was heard up there in the other verses. Verse 20 talks about hearing, heareth the word. The word was even said, I believe, up in verse 19 by the wayside. Yes, it says, when anyone heareth the word. In that verse, it's talking about the ones that are on the wayside. They heard the word. What did they do with the word? Did they just didn't care about the word? You know, there's a lot of people that's going to stand in front of the Lord and they're not going to care about the word. God's going to find them that they didn't really take it serious. See, the one on the wayside, they heard the word. The one in the stony places, they heard the word. The ones that was in the thorns, they heard the word. 
And now the one that is on the good grounds is he that heareth the word. You notice that the word is the same word. The people that are on the wayside heard the word. What did they do with the word? They on the wayside. The stony places heard the word. What did they do with the word? The people in the thorns, what did they do with the word? But the people on good grounds is he that heareth the word and understandeth it. So if you go back to these other places, did they understand? No, according to the one on the wayside, then cometh the wicked one. It says, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, they didn't understand because they was on the wayside. Did they, did, did the other group hear the word? It says here, and they with joy receiveth it. But then when tribulation come, because of the word, they are offended. So the word offended them. And then it says, he that heareth the word in the thorns, and then the cares of the world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Just like them plants of mine out there that is becoming unfruitful. I'm wasting water. I need to go ahead and pull them vines out and throw them over the fence because they're not producing any more cucumbers now. But in this verse that we're in right now, but he that receiveth seed into the good ground, the good ground is the ground that has been fertilized, it's been watered, that it's been cultured, it's been tilled, it grows to the maximum potential. It gets the fertilization. It gets the rainfall. It gets everything that it needs in order for it to be good ground. The good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it. How many people will go and say, I don't understand the Bible? You know why? They don't open the Bible. They don't open it. They don't care to want to understand. Now, that's a dangerous thing. When you don't care to understand, the people that were on the wayside, they heard. But did they take it? They understood it not. The same way as the one that was on the stony places. It endured for a little while, and they got offended and then the ones with the thorns, the deceitful riches, come and it made the fruit unfruitful, all because of the thorns that covered up the ground. But then in verse 23, the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit. Now, did it say that it bore fruit up here in the wayside? It says that the wicked one come and catcheth the way that was sown in their hearts. So that person is not going to grow. The stony places is the ones that hear the word, but then the root is not there to endure. And so therefore they are offended. So now they don't have fruit. These thorn places right here, that chokes the word. So they don't have fruit, not the kind of fruit that the good grounds have. It says, which also beareth fruit. You know, I would have been disappointed if my little garden out there wouldn't have given me any cucumbers. That would have been horrible for me to go out there and water them on a daily basis and never get a cucumber. But it talks about here which also bear fruit and bring it forth. Did any of these other places brought forth anything? Maybe a little bit. 
not everybody's going to bring forth a real huge harvest because that's what the Bible says right here where we are. Some a hundredfold. You know, that's like planting one cucumber seed and getting a hundred cucumbers from that one little tiny seed. That's a hundredfold. Mine didn't do that. They just didn't do that. The pots don't grow like the ground grows. So the hundredfold, I didn't see. And then it says some 60. That's about a little better than half of the hundred. So you got 60, and then some is 30. Now, is he hung up on the hundredfold? Is Jesus hung up on the hundredfold? No, I don't think he's hung up on it. I think he's saying there's some that is on the good grounds. If I understand what my Bible says it here, it says the ones that hear the word and understandeth it, which also bear fruit. Do I want to bear fruit? I absolutely do. And bring it forth, meaning the fruit has to be brought forth and brought into the house in order for me to take advantage of the fruit, for me to be able to eat some of the fruit. It's got to be brought forth from the where the, where the garden is to where you eat it at. Some hundredfold. I want to think that there's people that's going to get a hundredfold blessing when they get to heaven. There's going to be some that's going to get 60. Maybe the Lord only gave them the ability to get 60. And then some is 30. But you know what? The hundredfold, the 60-fold, and the 30-fold all comes with the blessing of God. All of it comes with the blessing of God. But what if someone that settles for thirtyfold when God says you could have had a hundredfold, it's going to affect the reward that they're going to get on that day when they stand in front of the Lord? I just be honest with you, I can't make someone get a hundredfold. I can't even make someone get 60-fold and 30-fold. All I can do is bring out what the Word of God says. That's what I've done tonight. Where, What fruit are you going to bear? What fruit are you going to show the Lord when you get to heaven? Is there going to be any fruit at all? Are you going to be content to be in the wayside, on the stony grounds and in the thorns? Are you going to be content right there? Or, or are you going to be content in the good grounds? See, if I, if I, let me say like I said at the nursing home today, if I had $30 at this area of the table, I had $60 by the side of it, and I had $100 over here, I asked the people, which would they take? And you know what a lot of them said? The one that's 100 because it's more. But yet, we think that we're just going to walk in and try to fool God, and it ain't going to work. You're not going to fool God. There's a lot of people that is going to stand before him with no reward. Maybe they might get into heaven because of salvation, but they won't be there to receive much of a, of a reward. I hope I made my point today. Elderly ministry is... The YouTube channel, elderlyministry.com is the website. Go there. If I can help you in any question that you got, please let me know. Don't be content in just being a 30 or a 60 or a 10 or a 5 or a 1 or whatever number. Be content with the 1. You know, God can bless the 30. He can. If that's all that God gives me, you know what I've said in the past? I'll say it again before I go. If God gives me 10 people to win to the Lord, I want all 10. I don't want to stand in front of him and him say, Ken, you could have had 
the ten that I give you, but you ended up with eight. Is eight still a passing grade? Would I would have desired the ten? Yes. Absolutely. Thank y'all for watching.